Hello everyone, how are you today? Or tonight, or this morning, or whatever it is for you. Thank you for being here. I'm good, thank you, Striker. I'm glad you're good as well. And thanks for coming. Yes, Chalk Mint, you did scare me. I was actually really worried. But yeah, I'm glad that you have recovered fast and well. I'm glad you're excited. It's an exciting time with um, eclipse season and the portal that we're in, this two week period between eclipses. So yeah, a lot is happening and, and changing. And um, yeah, so um, I am just going to go through an overview first of the energies of the week and what's happening um, for us all as a collective and then I'm going to go through each individual sign um, by rising signs. I mean you can apply it to your sun and your moon to a lesser degree. Um, your moon is a bit more accurate it can be um, because it does touch on that more emotional internal level level and the sun can be but not as much so as moon and definitely either of them as much as rising because the rising sign is um the very first house so when you look and see the charts today for each sign the first house is the sign i'll be talking about and then i'll speak about where an astral energy is hitting in a certain house and sign and you'll be able to see that um, on the chart and um, that first house um, sets out the chart because those 12 areas, those 12 quadrants of the chart are um, different areas of our life. So it's been a bit hard, but I decided to come on and watch this morning. Oh, good. I hope that today um, helps you in some way, Striker. Because yeah, it can be a very intense time this two weeks. So um, we need to be gentle with ourselves, especially with this um, third quarter square of the moon coming up um, in the next couple of days. So yeah, um, and we'll go through all that in a minute. Hey Yosh, I have to talk. Mm -hmm. I'll be feeding you soon. He's hungry, of course, as always. Um, yeah, so. Um, I'm just going to get going because it doesn't matter if there's no one, not too many people here because it can be watched back. I'll be putting it um, as a highlight. I'll also chop it up into the individual signs and highlights too. And I'll put it on YouTube again this week too, chopped up. Um, but I probably won't get to YouTube till tomorrow. Um, I might get to chop it up tonight, I might not, probably not. But um, it'll be there tomorrow sometime anyway, tomorrow night or something. Uh, in the next like 24 to 36 hours <laughs> but it's always here um, under my latest videos to rewatch anyway until then if anyone gets desperate um, but yeah so yes I haven't been doing and watching astrology m much this week in general oh okay do you know what I haven't as much either which is um, funny um, yeah like that's usually all I do but I've been like I've been on Twitch looking at other people and doing other things, I guess, so. Yeah, um. Do you want to adjust it? Um, so. Just left a review for you. Aw, thank you, Chalk Mint. That is so kind of you. I really appreciate that. It really helps. It really makes a difference, reviews. Um, mm, feedback is something that's, like, really important. And then it can help others, obviously, too, to um, see what they're possibly getting themselves into. Um, yeah, it's not like we not quit. It's still a hobby, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's just sometimes you just have to tune out, I guess, especially during probably these intense times because if you, like, tune into it too much sometimes and overthink it, then it can just be overwhelming. And, yeah, so sometimes we do need to take a break away from certain things, definitely. Okay, so I'm going to get into it then. <clears throat> um... Uh, 
how long you reckon it'll take to get to Libra? Um, not too long. It's not going to be long today. So maybe like 10, 15 minutes sort of thing. 15 minutes maybe. Um, I'm not going to be on too long at all. Oh, my baby bear. All the cats are getting hungry, so definitely not. Okay, let's get started and get into it so it doesn't take too long. All right. So, um, so the energy this week, we're still in that eclipse portal, the two weeks. And if you remember from last week, we spoke about the um, eclipses and we had the full moon in Gemini, the lunar eclipse, which, which was all about, um, you know, we're moving away from that south node, leaving behind and moving away from old beliefs and old stories and things that aren't serving us and, and our purpose and aren't helping us to move into that um, new direction and like of uh, new ways of learning and connecting and writing and speaking and communicating and um, processing information and um, and sharing and, and whatnot and all that stuff so um, hello baby bear hello so this week um, <clears throat> um, we're in that middle of the eclipse energy the period in, in between until the moon reaches Sagittarius Sun next Monday that's on the 14th um, I think that's Monday, for, well, it's Monday for me, maybe it's like Sunday for other people, but it's the 14th of um, December, um, where it will form the total eclipse with the south node. Um, so I will speak all about that next weekend, the total solar eclipse, because of the Monday, I'll do it on the weekend on the Sunday, um, but the eclipse, that eclipse will be when the sun is being eclipsed by the moon. Um, I might lurk and check someone else out because I need some specific advice, but it won't be long. Okay, no worries. Um, so uh, this two-week period, as I said, can be very intense and karmic. It can bring to the surface those outgrown beliefs and stories we've been holding us back. Anything the full moon highlighted for us that we need to move away from, release and let go now. Um, we will have a third quarter moon square as the moon is waning down. Um, the energy is decreasing as we've gone from the full moon and we're coming into that new moon um, on the eclipse on Monday. Um, awesome. Uh, we are feeling the need to close and end things from that full moon that we've released and let go of. Um, we'll start to feel the need to go within and it's important for us to nurture ourselves, take care, especially in the lead up to this new moon. Um, it'll be a dark moon in Scorpio, which could be nasty. It could be intense, it could be really emotional and deep and cutting, it could be like Scorpio stinging energy as well where if we haven't done that um, work and cut off and done all this stuff over this two week period and it's coming up to that last moment in that dark moon, it's going to be super intense and it's going to sting and it's going to be harsh and um, it's not going to be easy if we haven't been working through that stuff. Um, yeah, so that would be the last purging before the new optimistic Sagittarius um, moon and um, the new moon and when we're going to move into this new energy and all this is going to start manifesting all this new stuff. Um, so, um, okay, uh, there could be feelings that come up with this um, dark moon too at the end of the week around betrayal or trust issues. Um, coming into information about that too, information coming to the surface. Um, it could bring up issues before the eclipse around these topics as well. Trust, betrayal, suspicion, truth, confusion, intense emotions, feelings, in in intense emotional feelings including sexual desires, any kind of trauma around any of that too, and opportunities for healing because when it comes to the surface, into the light from the darkness is when we can truly heal it. Um, this week also we're going to have the Sun squaring Neptune and this can make us a bit over idealistic, over optimistic, um, trying to reach for too many goals or do too many things or expecting too many things to come together at once. Um, remembering that, um, and sorry, um, also getting lost um, in dreaming too in our dreams and not being able to really um, We've been trying to put them into action, but we're just it could be doing too many things and trying to achieve too many goals, and you know, dreaming of being too dreamy basically, and not um, and not practical enough, I guess. Uh, we could be doubting ourselves and not seeing the path clearly. Obviously, we're still holding on to how we thought things would look. Um, it can feel disheartening or like disappointment if we haven't achieved what we wanted to yet. Um, it could even hurt our ego. But we have to remember how far we've come and the courageous step that we've ta steps we've taken to already get here and how far 
we have come, like those steps we've taken to get here um, and what we've been through during that. We have to see the foundations we've built, whether it be internally or externally, within our environment, and um, you know how they can support us and provide structure. Um, hello, DB Frog. Um, so, but this, you know, this is going to move us into be ready for that adventure again, to go on that adventure and excitement and passion and um, you know go after what we want, basically like the Sagittarius Centaur does. Uh, Jupiter's gone direct in Capricorn too, where it's heading to meet the Saturn in, Saturn in Aquarius for the conjunction on the 21st of December, which I will talk more about uh, the following weekend after next, after the eclipse, um, because that's going to be humongous for everyone, for the collective, for everyone individually, just in general. Uh, we should start to feel more optimistic and start to receive gifts and rewards and um, all sorts of uh, optimistic positive opportunities and things like that coming forward now from the hard work that we've done over this whole year as Jupiter and Saturn have been moving through uh, Capricorn and Pluto's been there and all the uh, deep transformations we've gone through and um, what we've needed to do to shed anything to get to that um, really good foundation. So with this though, we can um, overindulge through eating in the holiday season or spending too much money. That's when that Jupiter energy is there at the most. Um, feeling really optimistic and expansive. Um, you know, we can also over drink and stuff like that too and party too much. And obviously that's so in theme with like Christmas parties and stuff like that around this time. Um, we could be feeling like we need a reward after all this year and everything that it's brought um, and this could be helping us to feel better that 2020 is almost coming to an end and it's and and for some this will be all that is pulling them through now to get through to 2021 the fact that um, this little bit of optimistic energy that the year is almost over and we're almost there and almost through it so yeah um, if we went within when Jupiter was um, in retrograde and found the light within ourselves and develop the gifts that we need to be able to take out into the world and grown into the roles that we need to within ourselves then and we when we filled our own cup with inside and not in the external world then we won't need to overindulge and do all those things and look for those external sources there um, we can continue that growth process within and shine that out sort of thing and expand it out and share it and um, whatnot there so yeah so that's pretty much it for overall for the week until we come up to the um, solar eclipse um, on Monday on the 14th. So I'll go through each sign now one by one starting with Aries and what I want to talk about is the intensity with the um, third quarter moons um, this week and just that last sort of... Um, square that it's going to bring and the intensity it's going to push out and all that and just sort of look at it in each sign so we'll bring that up so as I said it's best to start with your rising sign uh, to look, sorry to look for your rising sign because um, that's going to be the layout of your life and the, where the transits are hitting in your life and how they can affect your life if you're looking at the sun, it's more for an external sort of um, ego point of view and not necessarily about your life path as much. Um, and the moon can be good too because it can be about our internal and emotional self and quite healing and helpful because our um, moons are very much a part of our you know environment and stuff as well, um, the emotions and feelings and everything. So, hi GP Slice, welcome here. <coughs> welcome to my channel. I am Kat or Christine. Thank you for being here. So we're about to do a weekly overview for each sign now. We've just done the general overview, which will be available to watch back. And I'll also cut it up into highlights. So it's easier to read just each sign. And also, okay, baby bear. And I'll also um, upload it on YouTube with each sign too. So, okay, let's get into it. Let's start with Aries, you okay? Okay, let's start with Aries. Let's bring up Aries. Okay, um, now. The main some 
new chart, so, oh, it's a bit small, just let me adjust it. And hopefully it is big enough for you to see. Okay, so, now starting with Aries, just in time, yeah, perfect, okay. So for Aries now, we're looking at this um, moon, this um, uh, third quarter square, and um, so we're looking at um, the Pisces and Virgos, Virgo axes here. So um, Neptune is uh, in Pisces and it's the forming a square, uh, so an opposition there with to the Virgo moon and then also um, squaring where it's going to be um, coming up with the full moon. So for Aries, this energy is very much going to be affecting you in um, like your daily routines, um, you know, your health and uh, how it's affecting you, like your health, your fitness, your organization. Um, it's like, you know, if you're getting up and going to bed early enough and having good routines that help to keep your mental state balanced and help your um, psychological um, state basically to be like healthy, which enables like your body to be able to, to function normally and you'd be able to like um you know work out and do these things that you need to to be healthy um also um uh you know giving you um uh, when you've got those healthy routines too that's especially what an aries person needs it um you know it uh releases that um need for any kind of built-up energy where it becomes like tension headaches and anger or anything like that too when you've got that really good healthy physical um, routines and daily routines and healthy practices again we're like going to bed early getting up early and you know looking after yourself and that again will affect like that mental state and you know things like depression and all that as well um, so again so um, that focus there is very much going to be on making sure you're organized and making sure that you're paying attention to the details thing of the day-to-day -day life and not off with the fairies and um, often like another reality in another world and just daydreaming and stuff like that, but really being present in um, what you're doing in your everyday, whether that's work or um, just your day-to-day -day stuff, but being trying to be more focused on work and not getting lost and um, often delusional with like um, not reality basically. So that's it pretty much for Aries for this week as we come up to the Eclipse. All right, so I'm going to move on to Taurus. I'm going to bring the chart up for Taurus now. Okay. Uh, so here I am saving up for a Reiki healing redeem, but I don't actually know what it does. Some which I am. Oh, chalk him hint. So Reiki energy healing is basically so it was something that was channeled down from Dr. Usui. He's a Japanese um, energy healer, and he channeled this energy healing that basically uses universal healing energy to go through the body um, of the healer or the channeler, whatever it is and into um, the patient, animal, human, whatever it is, it could be tree, anything like that, you can put Reiki energy healing into. But yeah, channeling that energy from universe down through the body into another body. And it's exchanged through, um, yeah, that chi energy. And basically what it is, it's not the practitioner like myself, I'm not the one healing, I'm just allowing the energy blocks to move throughout your body so that your body can do its own healing because our bodies are so powerful when they're healthy and they're in flow and our chakras are all balanced and everything's, all the chi is flowing through and that kundalini energy can move freely up and down our spine and all that, then, um, then that's when we have like really good health and stuff like that. So it's enabling the energy to be able to um, move and flow and get rid of those blocks that are stopping it and then the body can heal itself. Um, hello Tally Dog, how are you? Have you guys also heard of Access Bars? No, I haven't, GP Slice. What is Access Bars? Okay, so let's move on to Taurus because I don't, I want to move through these pretty fast today, tonight. Um, okay, so for Taurus, now we're looking at um, the Virgo and Pisces access view. And uh, that's the 11th and 5th house. So this quarter moon square um, 
and the Neptune square the moon is going to be happening uh, so Neptune opposing the moon is going to be happening in um, the 11th and 5th house for you so the focus here is very much on um, the being in like your heart energy and um, you know finding that playful creative expression of yourself and being childlike and um, you know feeling into that energy and being there and like really um, honoring that and um, tapping into that and nurturing the self there with those that creativity and those um, that fun and that playfulness and having time and making time to do those things over these next few days um, that's going to help you to be able to step into that real heart energy and help you to work through that Sagittarius stuff that's coming up um, and that we're going through at the moment and it's going to come up with those new opportunities for you which you can look back and listen to the other um, start of the video for and all that as well um, but that Pisces energy opposing in the 11th house can, you know, make it a bit um, hazy and um, uh, deceptive and unsure and, um, you know, foggy around, um, uh, like, uh, friendships and those outer connections and um, anything you do in, like, the outer world with other people and, you know, that's um, not within your home and your local environment that's... Uh, for that higher purpose or, you know, for friendships and things like that. Okay, baby bear, I'm just going to put you down, my sweetie. Come on. Just stay down there. They have to be careful with him because he has seizures and he's had them on my computer desk before, so... Yeah, anyway. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, so that um, Pisces energy is like, could be like friendships being deceptive or friends being, you know, not telling you the truth or like deceiving you and say, or leading you astray or, you know, even seeing people with like rose colored glasses and not seeing them for who they really are. And they're like, um, you know, getting in the way of you, like, you know, being in that heart energy and being that creative self and, you know, really stepping into who you are and what you want to do and what you want to create. You're clearly reading off the screen what you're saying is, oh my God. He just like stabbed me in the heart there, but okay, yeah. Anyway, moving on. No intimacy, like math class all over again. Oh my god. Okay. Um, so um let's move into yes, I am reading off the screen. I'm reading this chart. We're looking at Taurus and Virgo accesses. Whoa. Okay, so um Okay, yeah, so we're looking at, um, yeah, any, like I said, any kind of friends or it's something in that outer world that could be like blocking you or deceiving you or, you know, you're not seeing something clear. It's holding you back from that loving, that heart energy and that creati creativity and stepping into that. Okay, um, okay so let's move on to uh, Gemini Rising now. now. Let me bring up Gemini's chart. Okay. <sighs> okay, that put me off. Let me just reset myself there. Gosh, okay. So, let's move into Gemini. Alright, so for Gemini... So this really infect, affects you more intensely too, Gemini, because we've had that full moon in your sign, and now it's um and it's that opposition and that coming up in that Sagittarius um, solar eclipse in your seventh house, which is like your identity and your relationships, and it's that opposition there of finding that balance between those and really stepping away from the relationships and people like uh, other people's beliefs and the relationships, like other people's stories that are holding you back, or old relationships and people that are holding you back as well. Oh, at least it's not 7 p.m. like last night. <laughs> Apparently I'm exhausted. I'm going to need to go to sleep. Okay. Okay, Chalk Mint, take care. So um, now we're looking at that um, moon and that opposition and that square with Pisces and Virgo there. So we're looking at the fourth house and the tenth house there. Um, so the fourth house is the home and the family. It's like our roots. It's... um you know, our local, sort of like our environment, where we spend our time, basically. So you're really wanting to um, tune in on the emotions and feelings and energy around that and, um, you know, what it really, what really makes you comforted and nurtured in your home and what makes you feel good and the environment there. And, you know, 
basically, um, with that 10th house too, there could be like you're spending too much time at work or focusing on like work and the outer world and um, what you want to achieve and your goals and all that stuff. And it's almost like, you know, it could be that over achieving energy or over deceiving yourself or sabotaging yourself in way, some way where you're overworking and you're doing all that. And you're not having enough of that nurturing and home and that um, time to look after yourself and that care. And that's not going to be able to help you to um, be able to achieve those things in the world and those outer goals um, and to be able to, you know, create some kind of um, uh, legacy or, you know, build something or, or whatever it is. So really um, needing to take that time and that care and, you know, nurture yourself and be at home and, um, you know, come back into your own energy and your own space. Um, especially like a fourth house Virgo is definitely someone that can be that hermit energy too. Um, where they can really need to like recharge at home and have that um, space and that hermit time. So yeah, that's it for Gemini. Let's move on to Cancer. For Cancer rising people. Okay. <clears throat> All right, where are we? Cancel. Okay, so for cancer rising people, oops. Oh, I just got rid of my overlay. <laughs> Whoopsies. Okay. Oh, is it for the major three or more on rising? This is for rising sign. Um, so yes, this is for rising sign. So, um, but you can refer to um, your sun and your moon on a lesser degree. Like it does help your moon sign more so then your sun too, because your moon is like our emotions and our feelings and like our, in, our internal environment. Also can be like our local, it's like our environment, like right around us, like right here, this is my space right here now, you know, what makes me content and feel happy and nurtured and all that too. So, um, uh, so yeah, our moon can be very important too and it can help clarify and give um, more information on that rising sign. So, you know, we go through rising, um, we go through these things and we say it could be this, this, this and this because that's all the areas of the house that would be affecting and those sorts of things with that sign is what it could be. And um, when we bring in like the moon sign and look at it, you, you'll find something in the moon sign that will relate probably and you'll be like, oh, it must be that because those two things tie together and that makes sense, you know. So yeah, you can listen to both to get a bit more information or clarity around it too. And again, the sun can even clarify that a little bit more or just give it from a different perspective too because they are all different. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Um, GP slice and that was a really good question so thank you for asking um, okay so yes let's move on to cancer rising so uh, cancer rising um, so for you uh, this energy is in Virgo and Pisces axis um, and for you that's the third and ninth house so um, that third house that is where the moon is going to be and that's where you need to um, focus your like energy and your eternal self and your emotions and feelings which is all about like expression and communication and and it can be like where we go to and our like local day-to-day -day travels and um, can also be like siblings like so like our brothers and sisters or those that are like really super close to us like that um, and like yeah so it's like our environment and and like making sure you're tuning into like um, you know, being able to express yourself and communicate. And that's what it involves when it's those people, being able to talk to them, express your, you know, who you are, or not even who you are, but what you want to talk about, and what you want to discuss, and what you want to share, and, and the information that you want to, um, um, you know, uh, not so much the information you want to share, but um, uh, the connections and communication you want to have, and, you know, that self-expression, basically, of, you know, what you're thinking, and, um, 
what you want to talk about and what your you know visions and ideas are too like your ideas that very much that third house can be our ideas and that Virgo energy too in that third house is very much like someone that can be like quite analytical with their thoughts and their thought processes and all that too and also someone that can be like an overthinker as well and um, you know so maybe it's like making sure you don't overthink too with that moon energy there and um, become so like hermitized and numb with that Virgo energy with that overthinking that um, you're not able to express yourself and communicate and that and that Pisces energy and that access to in that ninth house there could be something there like you're deceiving yourself around your beliefs or there's something foggy or not clear with like your beliefs or um, even can be like um, that ninth house could be um, old like uh, education or um, the stuff from information that we've learned or studied or absorbed and taken in over a long time that just no longer is working for us and isn't needed anymore and is like um, uh, not helping us on our path and is like holding us back or deceiving us or just or, um, or you know keeping us stuck in some way maybe um, and you know maybe overly emotional too so yeah um, really wanting to get clear on the communication and um, make sure that your communication is being clear and that you're not being deceptive as well and that you really are expressing yourself and what you really have to say and, and all that too. And um, not making things, and when you are talking communicating too, not, um, you know, um, sugarcoating it and things like that as well. So that is you for the week, Cancer Rising. Moving on to Leo Rising. Okay, now let me bring up Leo. Okay, so, oh, yep, okay, so for Leo rising. Okay, so for Leo rising, it's going to be happening, the moon energy, the square and the opposition, that intensity with Virgo and Pisces for you. Um, and it is, it's very much, it's squaring that Sagittarius energy that's coming up in that Gemini axis, but the focus to move out of that is that Virgo Pisces, um, to help move through that is that Virgo Pisces energy. Um, so for you it's the second and eighth house so uh, that second house and that Virgo energy um, is very much about like yeah getting like practical so it's about the emotions and feelings that are going to be around um, your worth and your um, confidence all that around your like um, skills and abilities and the money that you're earning through that and um, being able to support yourself and look after yourself and um, earn money and um, you know have the things you need that are um, essential and all that too so um, that deception and that sort of fogginess and that um, not clear sort of energy in Pisces is coming from maybe like um, you still feeling like you need to rely on other people's money or other people's resources maybe um, or like loans or inheritance or taxes or something like that that's still like quite foggy or hazy or it's holding you back that's like you know creating a bit of emotional turmoil there or um, you know could create a trigger there or something like that um, or is triggering there um, and like yeah it's you know really needing to like dig into those emotions of that self-worth and and really like just seeing the skills that you have and knowing that um, they're there and that they're available for you to use and not being you know deceived by um, that you know thinking or feeling like you've got to rely on that you know outside resources of someone else or um, whatever to you know support you um, and you know to feel stable um, so that is yeah that's sort of the biggest thing there and you know there could even be something there around if it is that self-worth and that um, confidence in that, that 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 needs to happen there could be some like deep healing and transformation that still needs to be done that you know your sort of um, uh, turning a blind eye to and just like not you know not admitting it and not like seeing it clearly and just saying oh it's okay it'll sort itself out no it's all right and all right no you need to do the work you need to do the healing you've got to like go through it and work through it to to get to that good um, place of that self-worth and that confidence so you can hone in on those skills and that and be able to be uh, stable with that those own, your own resources and your own money and not the external stuff so yeah that's it for uh, uh, Leo rising <clears throat> Um, let's move on to um, Virgo rising. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so for Virgo rising. So for Virgo rising, it's happening. So the moon energy, the opposition and the squaring energy is happening for you. The third quarter moon square um, in the seventh and the first house. So yes, yeah, so for Virgo rising, this is going to be, the moon's going to be moving through your first house, which is like your identity, who you are, um, you know, what you're about can be your appearance and all that. So there could be deep emotional feelings around um yeah your appearance and the way you're presenting yourself and um you know the way you want to um show yourself in the world and you know what you're sort of here to um to do in a way of um like what you're rising to be and all that being your rising sign and um so um that virgo in that first house you know it could be like you know the needing to like get out of the head and get out of the emotions and um, get out of the feelings of um, you know that overthinking and um, those emotions of um, being really harsh on the self and being really critical of the self and um, expecting so much of the self as well and like you know having these huge lists and like having to you know get so much done all the time and tick them all off and just like being a bit softer with the self and like easing off and not like um, you know uh, you know having so much pressure on the self um, and with that opposition there to Pisces in that seventh house, that Neptune, it's, um, you know, it could be also that, you know, that Virgo person is someone that likes to be of service and they like to be helpful and all that. And, you know, it, maybe that's, you know, you've been doing too much of that in relationships or there's something there with, you know, other people, the other relationships you had, and it could even be business partnerships or something with that seventh house. But there's something there where they're like they're draining you or um it's you know there's just something shifty there with those relationships they're either toxic or they're draining you or um you're seeing people with rose-colored glasses that's you know that's the biggest seventh house pisces things is you know idolizing relationships and people for you know seeing them for what they are and not really seeing them for not really for what they are sort of thing and you know forgetting about that identity and that self and getting lost in other people and um, not being in that individual independent self and that Virgo energy and Virgo it can very much be like that because they um, are hard-working and um, they are um, really witty and smart so yeah um, that's you know there's something uh, to work through there um, and really tune into the self and the emotions and what you really um, want for you and what's about you and what you desire and I guess it's about the self so um, and you know something getting away from that that energy there of that Pisces um, relationship area so yeah that's it for Virgo rising let's move on to Libra rising we're doing pretty good to get through these not taking too long but the energy is carrying over, like I said, again from the eclipses last week and into next week. So this is sort of like a midpoint um, energy where we're sort of going through the energies that have already happened and that are coming up. And we're just like uh, nothing like huge and major until we get to this. But there's some little things along the way that we have to work through to be able to get through what's coming up. Um, OK, so let's move on to the next one, which is liberalizing. Okay, Libra rising. So for Libra rising, just wait for the chart to come up. <laughs> okay, so for Libra rising, so for Libra, the um, third quarter moon um, square and opposi opposition with Pisces um, <clears throat> is um, happening there in the um, 12th and the 6th house for you. So the 12th house where that moon is going to be is very much um, about our sort of emotional, um, the moon is about our emotions and internal self and all that and the 12th house is like our higher self, our consciousness, our mental state, our like higher mind. So it's not that those emotions and feelings that are more like you know coming from um, the inner self and like the heart and all that it's that higher self that you know that channeled energy that intuition that um, that God-like um, energy that we connect to or universal energy or whatnot so in that 12th house it's like you know it's in the moon there it's it's focusing on making sure that you probably like got quite 
good healthy practices there um, because if you're um, not looking after yourself in those ways then for that Virgo person that sorry not the Virgo the Libra rising person with that Virgo 12th house energy it can be very debilitating because um, it's um, you know it's overthinking and um, when it becomes overthinking and you know that hermit 12th house energy basically it's it's um, it can be really depressing and um, just you can just get stuck in the mind and it's just hard to get out because the emotions and the feeling and the overwhelmingness and the overthinking and all that just all ties in together and it's just it can be hard to like break out of that um so yeah that's something to like watch out for this week and you know to be able to like break free of that and not have that is like one of the most important things for that energy and that sign is um meditating or um, having something that you can do like it could even like for someone that's a Virgo rising oh, sorry liberal rising person with that Virgo 12th house um, and this is like a Virgo rising person too but that 12th house it's you know um, when it's more from an unhealthy point of view um, you could go into those things where you just shut down from the world and you go into those Virgo um, things of uh, like ripping apart a house and reorganizing it or like um, cleaning the whole house crazy or something like that or it could even be like detoxing your mind or something in some like crazy way like oh I won't even get into it but yeah it's something like that because it's more in the mind in there with that 12th house so it's like some kind of like um you know something and like the mind you know if it's like being cluttered by too much like of what's going around in it and that then that can be um quite detrimental too because that sixth house is that sort of like um, daily routines um, where that Pisces energy is that daily routines that health that um, fitness and all that stuff and if it's like really unbalanced there and there's not healthy practices especially that sixth house Pisces there like I said it's important to have things like um, meditation or yoga practices or something there with those when it is those signs there on an axis because you need that um, balance there because otherwise um, um, yeah you can just have like mental issues and and um just and i don't mean like someone's like got mental problems and that but you know it's the the mental states like the mark the um you know just not being a balance basically being really unbalanced um so you know it's not feeling good not feeling balanced we can feel a bit erratic or um you know anxious and nervous with that 12th house virgo energy they could just be like super intense tense anxiety and that. and when you're not getting at, at those healthy practices in um every day to help balance out that pisces sixth house energy then that virgo overthinking mind can become um quite self-sabotaging i guess yeah so yeah focusing on those healthy um daily routines is like super important um right now and like probably like making sure you're being gentle as well um, and tuning into yourself when it comes to um, those your, your body in that as well like not deceiving yourself and really listening to your body and giving it what it needs and what it wants and um, not just thinking it's all going to be okay and you'll work through it and um, it's going to be tough and your body's strong and it, it you know it'll fight things whatever no you need to look after it and care for it and all that as well very true I've been cleaning everything <laughs> okay nuts okay so uh, let's move on to Scorpio rising um, okay that Scorpio um, rising sign so for Scorpios now this um, intense moon energy um, is going to be happening um, in the 11th and 5th houses so for you um, this 11th house is like 11th house is like our friendships our connections those sort of outer world connections that we have could be with like organizations with like um, 
groups and stuff like that. Um, it can be the things that we like do that are for like a higher purpose or sort of something outside ourselves and like connecting with others in some way. Um, again, like it can be like friendships and like yeah, social circles and all that as well. Um, so that moon intense energy there could you know um, you know bring up like the need for like that closeness with friends too and like being able to connect with them and. Um, you know, be with them and like have those um, good healthy bonds that aren't like, um, uh, <clears throat> um, that aren't like draining to you, that aren't um, like, they don't drag you back into like, um, but like, you know, like that fifth house stuff. We're looking at the fifth house and the Neptune stuff um, and like that Pisces stuff there. It's like um, very much, um, uh, like getting lost in, um, you know, it could even be like childhood stuff and tantrums and like being really immature and um, not like um, wanting to, um, not, not wanting to grow up, but um, just uh, wanting to like escape in like that childlike energy and like escape in um, immature things or like, you know, it can be like video games and that too, but that fifth house is like. Um, where we want to create and play and our romance and have fun and all that stuff and that Pisces escapism energy can be there or like where we're um, you know doing too much of that or overdoing it in that area or something like that and um, um, also um, even like where we're not um, you know honoring our like sensitive self and our creative self and like uh, um, taking the time to like um honor that because it is like that fifth house and those playfulness and that fun and that romance and that passion is really sensitive it's creative it's like artistic and it's um really like um um it's sensitive and all that so um need to take time to like honor that and like come into those childlike things of like caring and nurturing the self in um ways that aren't um uh, like self-sabotaging I guess um, that don't have you off lost with the fairies and not like in reality basically um, so maybe like focusing on the friendships and how they can like emotionally fulfill you and um, how the outer connections and circles can like really support you in the way of like um, either helping you to like achieve things or to just like um, be of service like to help you to feel like you're being of service and doing something good out in the world and really like um, um, serving like that Virgo energy of being of service so yeah maybe some you know try and think um, spend some time with some friends this week and and do it in a way that you're serving them and serving yourself at the same time um, yeah so uh, that's it for Scorpio rising for the week so um, again if you look back at the overview at the start is an overview for all signs and the energy that's playing out um, and we're just sort of picking up on one sort of thing that's going on at the moment um, one thing that like will sort of affect up to the lead up of these eclipses um, this week so let's move on to Sagittarius rising four more to go <laughs> okay so for Sagittarius rising um, people Sag rising um, this um, moon energy is in the 10th house so what day is the solar eclipse um, it's the 14th so tally dog for us that's Monday I haven't checked the exact time yet um, it's like at 23 degrees I think it is happening um of sag and um yeah so i'm not sure about time yet so yeah monday for us in australia sunday probably for everyone else or early, sunday night or early s monday morning depending when it is what time it is yeah um okay so for um sag rising so for Sag rising, this is your 10th house. So, and 10th house Virgo energy is very much like um, that work, 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 work energy. So um, 
for you, um, your emotions and feelings very much might be thinking about like your work and your in what, but it's not in the what in the relation to like your daily routines, but but work in the way of like how it's going to be, how you're going to be able to create your goals and build and um, what you're putting out into the world and like the legacy you're going to create and all that. So there could be some emotions and feelings and even a bit of emotional turmoil around that. But something that's pushing you to break free from like. Um, the home or um, something that's like um, not quite clear or um, you know someone even someone like in the home or something like that or in your like immediate environment and all that that's um, you know uh, not being uh, true not truthful with you but not helping you to um, really step into that um, you know, 10th house Virgo energy where it's very much like, um, really good at like, um, you know, being of service basically in the outer world and getting things done and, um, you know, being the fixer and being able to like come up with solutions to solve things and solve problems and, um, also, gosh, you're distracting me. Um, and being able to, um, uh, pursue those like life goals and all that and, um, be really organized with them and have like really good set goals when it comes to it and achievable goals and knowing what you're going to do and how you're going to get there and there's something in that fourth house home energy that is um, where you're like either self-sabotaging or someone else is like there's something there where in the home that it's like um, uh, you know it could even be sleeping too much or something like that you know spending too much time in the home or something um, and not enough time in the outer world or um, putting, you know, um, not putting enough energy out in the outer world because you've just been stuck in that internal self in, in the home or something there. But there's some kind of connection in the home or something like that that needs to, you need to break free from a bit um, that's not truthful or not, not seeing it clearly or it's not being, um, it's pulling on your emotions basically and making it unable for you to get out into the world and and tick off those goals and tick off those lists so yeah that's Sag rising let's move on to capricorn rising three more to go okay capricorn rising okay so Okay, so for Capricorn rising. Okay, so for Capricorn rising, this moon, this uh, third quarter moon square is happening for you in Virgo in the ninth house. So um, the ninth house is oh gosh, the ninth house is like our beliefs. Um, the stories like we tell us of and that we've grown into and um, it can also be like the education that we've had in our life and the studies that we do the long-term um, learning uh, it can also be those um, like long-distance places and places we like to travel to or um, other like cultures that we have interest in or cultural beliefs and stuff like that too um, it can be yeah, like our spiritual beliefs and our um, spirituality and like our um, it can also represent like philosophical um, beliefs and studies and stuff like that as well. Um, so, uh, so for you, that's where that moon and emotional energy is going to be, that intensity this week um, in the next few days. So um, that Virgo energy there in that ninth house is very much about... Um, um, It's like having really like um, uh, healthy beliefs in that that aren't like um, uh, that aren't um, wishy-washy and that aren't like um, uh, not your own and not from like um, uh, developed. It basically, if we're looking at that opposition and that Pisces third energy it's very much like um 
you know, having like clear communication and clear expression of the self and like not letting the deception come in there of um, the mind and what you're really thinking and um, wanting to communicate and express. And that ninth house is like, that's that beliefs and um, there could be some like intensity there with um, uh, like maybe even um, overdoing it as well, overdoing it in that area and um, not being able to like focus on like the one thing and focusing on too many things at once and um, you know focusing on like um, like there could be just that like one guru energy that you need to find that one study material or that one um, uh, course that you need to do and not be focusing on like too many or um, things that are like not going to be like I keep getting practical that aren't going to be like practical be able to be practical you be able to practically put into place and actually like use in your life in some way and like be able to grow from and expand from um, and um, when it comes to that ninth house there and it's very much going to be about like um, having like really healthy um, beliefs that are like um, enable you to grow in the way of um, being um, um, having really good knowledge and information around like health and um, the body and like um, uh, when it comes to um, <clears throat> um, it's not like taking care of yourself but expressing yourself and um, communicating and all that and it's like having healthy beliefs that you're communicating and um, ones that aren't like wishy-washy and deceptive or that are um, coming from a place that are like not in reality and um, um, you know it can be someone that like tells stories tells a lot of stories that um, aren't like of reality and aren't real and like fantasizes about things that aren't really happening um, and like makes things up and all that and um, you want to make sure that that uh, that's your you're coming into realization about that the feelings and emotions are coming up around that so you're able to like work through that and push through that and like see it and um, not be deceived by it to basically move into like new beliefs and new healthy beliefs around um, any kind of belief structure in your life basically um, so that you can grow and learn and all that um, so yeah um, just getting really healthy beliefs um, and like patterns in place and um, getting rid of those like stories that just are deceptive to you basically that um, and it's like not the stories that are um, that you've grown up with and all that but it's like the ones that you've learnt newly that you're like telling yourself um, that you've picked up along the way and it could be from like other people or stuff like that as well um, okay so let's move into Aquarius <clears throat> Gosh. okay so Aquarius <clears throat> Okay, so for Aquarius rising, um, <clears throat> all right, so for Aquarius rising, we're looking at um, the eighth house for you. So that eighth house can be pretty much um, for you with the moon there. Could be you really seeing where you need to like do some really deep, intense healing and really like dig deep into the truth of things. Um, and the truth of like what you want and what you desire and what you need and you know that could really come up for you this week and um that's you know you could be tapping into that energy and it could feel like really dark as well and you could go into that um that hermit energy where you do have to hide away for those few days and um really be alone to like really feel into the emotions and to like let them out and to like you know cry and to like really like be angry be cry be upset whatever emotions come out really feel into them and get connect into them and find like healthy ways to process them as well so don't just get stuck in them and be negative and get deep but really let them come out and feel them and then work through them and um and um and do the healing basically 
that the moon is going to provide you when it brings up all those feelings emotions around that that stuff that you need to heal and that emotional healing can be related to like um you know other people like those really close relationships you have um it can be like business partnerships too or it can even be um <clears throat> other people's money and the resources that you have from other people too um you know there needs to be some deep emotional healing there and like maybe like around trust as well and being able to trust other people in some way and and trust that you can like rely on them and you know that um that uh, you know that um yeah that that um there's emotional deep emotional connection with those people and if there isn't then there needs to be some cutting away there because um <clears throat> you know if there's someone that's like making you think that you need to rely on them for their resources and um, not letting you see that you've got your own self-worth and that you are confident and that you you know you can use your own skills and your own abilities to like look after yourself um and provide for yourself and all that if there's like some kind of deception around there you know where someone's just like not letting you see that clearly um or you know you um you know there could be also where there's like a lot of debt or something like that too and that's you know going to take a real emotional toll and it's really helping you to see that that's really taking a toll on that um you know self-worth and confidence and like being able to be stable um and have really good um money um uh not be wishy-washy with your money basically so yeah um let's move into pisces the last sign okay so for pisces rising people <clears throat> Okay, so for Pisces rising, sorry, okay, so for Pisces rising, so for Pisces this intense moon, quarter moon, third quarter square moon is happening for you in the seventh house. So the seventh house is our relationships and, um, you know, <clears throat> um, so that moon is going to bring up intensities with maybe with your relationships and those people that you're close with um it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic relationships it could be business partnerships as well um, um but yeah it's something with our relationships those that you're close with um and the moon will be bringing up intense emotions and feelings around that so um you know it could be that you're getting too lost um within those relationships or there's something there where you're um you know maybe you're being too selfish in those relationships or maybe it's not getting too lost or maybe it's being too selfish in those relationships and not um you know getting emotional and um bringing out the emotions and feelings enough in those relationships and um or being wishing wishy-washy with your feelings and your emotions and not being upfront about them in those relationships and and express you know um showing that like romantic side in some way or you've been hiding that romantic side or um um just maybe there's something there like where you know you haven't been showing your full self in some way you've been hiding a part of yourself or you know um sh you know sh perceiving yourself to be not what quite is in relationships or something or um uh you know even like not like I said not showing that emotional side and bringing out those emotions and, that and being too serious in relationships or or um, uh, yeah and so bringing that sensitivity and those emotions out so this moon is going to trigger that and it's going to be really good for your relationships and being able to like bring more of that I that emotional I that sensitive identity of that Piscesness into there um, <clears throat> yeah you've got to find that balance there with that too um, um, yeah it can't just be all about work and work and work and work and, and like maybe yeah it just can't be all about work and what you're doing in the outer world and and all that stuff it needs to be um, something you know with your more focus on your relationships and, and building there in some way okay I think that's all I have for Pisces and that's all I have for the week for all the signs so thank you everyone for being here I appreciate it um, 
I hope everyone has a wonderful week and um, I'll see you next weekend for the eclipse um, season, the solar eclipse and what's going to be happening. Um, if you check out my schedule below, you'll see <clears throat> when I'm on next to do readings, which will be on Wednesday morning for me, my time, but it'll show you in the schedule below for your time. Um, also join Discord if you haven't already, where I post like daily information usually. <laughs> I've been a little bit slack this last few days, um, but um, yeah, post um, a lot of like, <clears throat> um, so daily information in there and there's a few other things in there as well in the group, so jump in. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. What day, oh, that's right, yes, so have a great week. Thank you, Tully Dog, thanks for being here. Have a lovely week also, <clears throat> and everybody take care. Thank you.